Hey, I guess I've never really introduced myself. My name's Nick, and I'm a full-time sculptor and fabricator. And in between the jobs that pay the bills, I sometimes make things for streamers like this. No, he made the bombs! No! No way, dude. Dude, what you watching? Nick, this is sick. This was the fucking, holy sh This was the fucking dude who 3D printed the fucking monkey nuts. Oh, that's sick, man. Nick Martinelli, fan fucking tacit, dude. So cool. So fucking cool. I had seen Ludwig was marathoning Elden Ring, so I figured I'd ask, Hey, Lud, want anything custom from the game, like an item or a weapon? I need a challenge for YouTube content. Um, this Riverblade Katana, forged by the god. Ooh, or the helmet. Since I'm already planning on making a certain sword from Demon Slayer, I'm gonna go with the helmet. When I started this build, the game was so new, there was almost no reference for Radon's helmet. I'm talking there was no screenshots, very little gameplay, and the wiki just had this picture. Luckily, I got a friend who had the armor set to send me some pictures. So with the limited resources, I sculpted this and sent it over to the resin printer. And I made this, a little scale model, or a maquette. I'm actually gonna be giving this away, so if you wanna know how to win your own mini red main helm, which can fit on most size kittens, make sure to watch to the end to find out how. While I'm printing the large ornate pieces for the next 36 hours, I'm gonna make the base, which is pretty much just a mix of a Corinthian and a Spartan helmet. Now obviously you don't need a plasma cutter to do this, but it's a little bit quicker, and with a little bit more time you could use shears or tin snips. Looks like the ornamental pieces are ready. Now that the prints are done, we have to make a mold so we can cast these out of metal. I'm gonna be making a two part mold. So the first step is encasing half of the object in clay. These little divots help me index the mold to make sure there's no leaks when it's time to pour the metal. We're going to mix up about $150 worth of silicone, then pour it over the 3D prints in clay. After everything's cured 12 hours later, I remove the clay, and I use foil tape to make a dam around the outside, which forms the other side of the mold. Now all we gotta do is mix up another $100 worth of silicone, pour it in the mold, and wait another 12 hours.
Now that everything's cured, I demold the 3D prints and I cut a place to pour the metal and some holes for the air to vent out. This is a 30 pound ingot of a bismuth and tin alloy. It runs about 10 bucks a pound. And while you're doing the math, I think it's a good time to mention that I have a Kofi account. So if you want to help out the channel or just buy me a coffee, the link's in the description. A cool thing about the main ingredient in this alloy, bismuth, is that it's diamagnetic. Which means under the right circumstances you could diamagnetically levitate a neodymium magnet almost indefinitely. I think this is pretty fitting for Radon, I mean he studied gravity magic, just so he could ride his horse no matter how big he got. So I ended up getting two sets of horns for my bone and horn guy down in New Mexico. And I think I'm gonna go with the less chody of the two and go with these long ones. In the game, Radon's helmet is golden, so we're going to need to spray this metal coating on the helmet. It's basically brass powder suspended in resin that retains its properties when it's cured. I ended up doing two coats of the metal coating, then I sprayed liver of sulfur, which if you don't know, will tarnish, or patina, the brass that's in the resin, which will darken the whole thing, allowing me to buff the high points and add a ton of contrast to the helmet. Alright, we're in the home stretch now. All that's left is Radon's red mane. Some would say the most iconic part of the red mane helm. I was initially going to use something called Lady Amherst Pheasant Feathers, but for the amount I needed, it came out to $750. So I ended up going with this artificial pampas grass. I think it worked out better this way because there's metal rods inside each one of these bundles, so the hair is completely poseable. I'm using a little bit of red spray paint here to make the red mane a little bit more red and stiffen it up a little bit. And that's pretty much it. I guess we're on to the glamour shots. Remember to stick around to the end to find out how you can win the mini helmet.
That was a lot of work, but I think it turned out pretty good. If you're wondering, yes, you can wear the helmet, but it's extremely heavy. It's about 16 pounds, unlike this small helmet, which you can win. All you have to do is be subscribed and comment on this video. I'll randomly select somebody in the next couple weeks and send it out to you. Hey Ludwig, send me a DM on Twitter so we can figure out how to get this to you. I'm trying to do less boring commercial work and more fun stuff like this, so my commissions are open. If you know anybody who'd be interested, send them my way. And if you have a streamer you think I should make something for, leave them down in the comments or send them this video. Thanks for watching.